Hey there, kitties. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to do a quick review of the movie Death House, which just got released today on both iTunes and Amazon Prime. Uh, it's also, I believe, going to come to Netflix in the near future, and uh, we'll have a DVD that is on Amazon, and I believe the Blu-ray is being released by Diabolic. Uh, Death House has been touted The Expendables of Horror, I don't think I'd call it that, as I thought The Expendables gave a ton of screen time to all these huge action stars like, you know, Arnold and Sly Stallone and Jason Statham, where Death House really just has small cameos of all these horror icons throughout the film. Uh, I believe this movie had gotten pushed back from 2017, because I know I've been looking at it for a couple of years now, and it was written by Gunnar Hansen. He was one of the writers who was the original Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1. And uh, he passed away before, I believe, the film started shooting. So he's in the film as a hologram. They use some old stock footage and just use him as like a hologram in the movie, which was kind of a nice nod. Uh, but I wish he was obviously alive to be in the film. It also stars Kane Hodder, who plays Jason from Friday the 13th in most of the films. Barbara Crampton, who uh, most recently for me was in Beyond the Gates, D. Wallace, Tony Todd, who plays Candyman, Bill Mosley from House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, Adrian Barbeau, Michael Berryman from The Hills Have Eyes, Felissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp, Sid Haig from House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, and one of my favorites, Vernon Wells, who plays Wes in The Road Warrior, and he was also sort of the same character in Weird Science, so you'll recognize him too. Um, the problem with this movie is, as I said, most of these horror icons are just kind of cameo appearance, appearances, and you can miss them. Uh, there's a scene with Felissa Rose, who I'm a big fan of. I, I've spoken to her a couple times on Twitter. I ordered her autograph, and I was really hoping for some good screen time with you know, her showing her acting chops. I thought she was really fun in the... Um, Victor Crowley movie, the most recent, recent Hatchet film, and she's in it so briefly that I didn't even realize it was her at first, and then I sort of paused it and looked and realized she was in the background. Um, so that's a huge, huge negative for me, that all these huge names are pretty much just cameos with little parts. Kane Hodder gets the most screen time, most definitely, out of all of them. The film uh, is about these lunatics and, and crazies who are like the worst murderers in the world or whatever, and they are housing them in this high-tech state-of-the-art facility where they're keeping them, I think, docile with virtual reality. So they have like glass, like virtual reality glasses on that are putting them in a world that's making them comfortable, whether it be, you know, an old house they lived in or being around people that they used to, you know, care for or whatever. And it tries to keep them, I think, down. Uh, there was a nod to um, Leatherface in the film because Debbie Rashawn from Tromeo and Juliet is in it very briefly again, and they call her Leather Lace. And uh, when they use Gunnar Hansen's hologram, they're referring to him being her dad. So I thought that was kind of a nice uh, nod again, but uh, she wasn't in the film very long. So these, I think they're FBI agents, are in the facility. And they're kind of going around monitoring things with uh, Barbara Crampton, who has a pretty good amount of screen time as well, but the rest of them really don't. And during this, um, I guess, uh, you know, viewing of the facility, there is Lloyd Kaufman, which is kind of uh, funny from Troma. Um, he's a doctor in the film, and he pulls out a device out of a dead body, and it happens to be an EMP. And the EMP goes off and shuts off all the electrical devices in the building, and now all the lunatics are free. Um, it also has uh, R.A. Mihailov in it from Texas Chainsaw 3, by the way. So all these crazies are now in the prison and, like, running amok, but it's so dark that it's sort of hard to see what's happening. Um, the special effects are pretty bad. There is one special effect I thought was really, really good, and I wish they used it more. Uh, they go into a basement at one point, these agents, and there's this, like, skinless woman, like, screaming and muttering to herself, and I thought she looked really good. Whoever did that, 
I, I thought they did a great job. Um, the story feels sort of mashed together. Um, I was just hoping for this like over the top horror icon romp, and instead you get just quick cameos and then Kane Hodder uh, trying to like. I guess, find these FBI agents and kill them as they're like fighting their way through the facility. But none of the action was really great. Most of it seemed very cheesy and, and like a B movie. Um, during one scene there, they have these homeless people that they round up that I guess they're using as fodder for the inmates to, I guess, you know, throw them to the inmates to kill or make them feel comfortable or, or whatever. And um, there was this one blonde woman who stood out. Um, they actually rip her gown off and her, her breasts fall out. But she, st she stood out uh, from the rest of the homeless people. She just, I don't know, something about her seemed a little more sad and, and intriguing, I guess. And uh, I happened to write to her online. Her name is Lillian Starr, S-T-A-R-R. -R, and she, uh, from what I'm gleaming from her Facebook and Instagram, she's a uh, burlesque uh, dancer and a hula hooper and obviously an actress. So kudos to Lillian Starr. And I reached out to her and I asked her if that was her in the movie. And she said, yeah. And she said, can you take a screenshot of it? So I said, this is not the, <laughs> the conversation I thought I'd be having today with the breastless woman on my, you know, TV here, not breastless, but you know, um, whatever, you know, naked breasted woman on my television, but it was very funny nonetheless. So I thought she did a good job in her small role of being a kind of, um, you know, off in space, homeless woman, which, you know, homeless girl won in the credits. So that was kind of funny. Um, that's about it. The movie just feels very cobbled together. The storyline was pretty bad. Uh, it stars these two actors, uh, Cody Longo. And let me see, what's the woman's name? I don't remember it. Um, Cody Longo, I thought was all right. I didn't really get into his, into his, uh, his uh, his character very much. Uh, the woman he's with, who is the other FBI agent or whatever, I thought she was pretty good. She sort of reminded me a little bit of um, that girl from uh, G4, uh, Olivia Munn, a little bit. Uh, in a way, she doesn't look a lot like her, but just slightly. Excuse me. Um, I just really hoped for more. I've been waiting for this film forever. And um, the special effects were bad. The cameos were bad. Um, the storyline didn't, it wasn't fleshed out and it just felt cobbled together. I just really didn't like it. And, and I'm ashamed to say that because I, I was waiting for this for so long and excited to see, you know, the expendables of the horror community and, you know, all these big name people together in one film. But uh, most of the time they don't share any screen time with each other. And their moments in the film are just so forgettable that they may just pass you by and you may not even realize you missed, you know, whoever it may be. Uh, as I said, uh, I thought Barbara Crampton and Dee Wallace got an okay amount of screen time and Kane Hodder, but the rest of them really didn't. Uh, the end of the film, which I'm not going to spoil, ends up a uh, in a sort of supernatural type of ending and I it came completely out of left field. I thought it was kind of a dumb ending. It didn't make much sense to me. Um, just not a fan. I mean, I may give it another watch again in the future just to give it another chance, but overall I was, I would, I would not recommend this one. I mean, th this is going to really pique the interest of mainly horror buffs who are into, you know, the old Friday the 13th and, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and Texas Chainsaw. They're going to go, oh my God, I get to see this. But I think overall, most people will be let down by this movie. And I apologize to anyone who worked on this film that is watching this. I don't, I don't mean anything, you know, any ill intent here. It's just my opinion, of course, but not good. So um, yeah, tell me if you guys saw Death House, what you thought, uh, if you think I'm completely off base. Thank you guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.